Hey guys, Ryan here, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Miles Edgeworth Investigations. So last time, the case started to become sort of convoluted, and uh, yeah, that's what one of you guys said in the comment sections, and I couldn't agree more. Um, with the introduction of this other side of the building, as for a similar murder and similar looking building, with knife handles missing from one place or another, attaching to different blades from one place to another, I bet I'm going to trip up on this case quite a bit, but I'm going to try my best to do my best, and without further ado, let's get started. As soon as it lets me start. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's me, Edgeworth. I've left Damas 2 and uh, Damas 2 investigation to Francisca and returned to Babel. Babel. Ugh. I suppose my first order of business should be to look into Babel's statue. Mr. Edgeworth! Oh, it's you three. It's okay, what's the situation? Oh, it's great! Investigating is so much fun! <laughs> In other words, they've made absolutely no progress. <laughs> we, we aren't goofing off, honest, sir. We've been investigating our hearts out. Very well, then. Would you care to give me an update on your investigation? Uh... Oh, we've had a really fun time, sir! <laughs> I knew it. Zero progress. In any case, Detective Gumshoe... Yes, sir? You have permission to enter the Alabastian Embassy, is that correct? Yep. <laughs> As a local detective, I'm helping out with investigations on both sides, sir. Good, in that case, I leave these pieces of evidence with you. <laughs> he has no idea what they're about. They belong to the lady under the pink princess's mask. Pink princess? What kind of lady play was playing her, sir? The kind that was also playing the role of the Pink Badger yesterday. No, no, don't make me. Don't make me do it, Edgeworth. Sorry, I've already dealt with her for an hour. It's your turn now. Oh, understood, sir. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her. <laughs> and if I don't, then I guess I'll unload them somewhere. Doesn't seem all that enthused to go and find her, but I can't blame him. <laughs> Evidence that has lost their value given to Detective Gumshoe. Now then, I don't believe I'll be needing this anymore, either. What? You're really going to throw that autograph away? Yes, because that steel samurai was a fake. <laughs> Assuming he realizes that they're not real? I'm not sure what that implies, if he's hoping for one from the real actor, or if he's hoping that he gets one from the real steel samurai and he honestly believes that they're real. Steel samurai's autograph scrunched up into a ball and disposed of. <laughs> Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? Now then, I believe it's time for a little housekeeping. Unnecessary evidence has been removed, remaining evidence has been rearranged. Away! Wait, what? Hey, you're not going back to the Albost Embassy, are you? No, not yet. I still need to gather a bit more information first. I literally moved, like, two feet down and she starts freaking out like, Andrew, don't leave! I need you here! We need to work and solve them! It's like, calm down, Cam. Throwing something away, God. Ah, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired. Here, with these, you can eat whatever you like. And these are... Discount tickets for our cafeteria. They open tomorrow at 10 in the morning. I appreciate the concern. However, these coupons do nothing for me right now. <laughs> this open-air stage, what function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract that extra bit of attention to Babal. I heard that tonight over in the Alabastian Rose Garden, Ambassador Alba was to give a speech. And you know what? Manny, to Manny told me that I really should give a speech too. Mr. Cochin told you that. Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Because of the fire the Yacht Grasu started. Exactly. Ambassador Paleno, I'd like to ask you a little more about the Primadu statues. Oh, I see. Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that Alabast and Babel used to be one country called Kadopia? Yes, I know that much about your history. Well, the Primadu statue belonged to the founders of Kadopia. At least that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed unto the King of Kadopia as a symbol of the country's wealth. So it was meant as a symbol of sovereignty and the, the right to rule, I take it. 
Yes, that's right, which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. We hold the real statue, therefore we hold the right to rule, is the reasoning. It's petty, it's pretty petty when you think about it, though, I suppose. Bonneville and Boston Babel were to re-establish, re uh, relations. Shouldn't that put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. The primitive statue is even more important now as a key to diplomacy. I wonder if Ambassador Polano knows about what has happened to the very important key to diplomacy. Perhaps I should try showing him this key and see what he has to say about it. Huh. Weird. I find it odd that sometimes Ace Attorney games will tell you to show someone evidence, but a lot of the time in the earlier ones, it was literally walk around the room and show everyone every single little piece of evidence you have until you figure out what they want to look at. Ambassador Polano, if you could please take a look at this for me. The primitive statue sitting in Alabast right now actually belongs to Babel. So it would appear. I received a call from Miss Von Karma about this earlier. You will understand why I wish to inspect Babel's primitive statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country's possession. Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. And it is definitely Alabast's statue. I know because it's the real statue. <laughs> then you're saying that Babal's was, was a replica. Embarrassed to say, but it's true, even though I knew that someday it would be it would be exposed. I received my orders from the leaders of Babel, and I was to negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluation tonight. To say that we could not determine which the real statue, which statue is the real one. Why are you telling me this? Because, well, because you've already figured it out. Our statue is just a hollow gold shell. Even if Bobble were to uh, were to lose face, it, the reunification of the country is what's important. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? I'm not making a mistake, right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought that by being betrayed by my own secretary, the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't it simply ironic? I'll present the other statue to him later. Ambassador Polano, there's one thing I'd like to ask you about. Yes? Oh, and don't worry. You can ask me... Uh, you can ask me more than just one thing. How about two or three? In exchange, I expect you'll be coming to, to Bayball, yes? Th thank you, but just the one thing is all I require. Manny Cochin, I'd like to ask you about this man who was your secretary. Sh sure I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for your cooperation, Ambassador. He was well. I had to put it in one word, he was an able man. If there was ever anything I needed as an ambassador, he was always there to get it for me. Do you think that a man like that had a hand in a smuggling ring right under my nose, going completely unnoticed? Actually, I suppose it was because he was an able man, I was unable to detect his dirty dealings. Hmm, it sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Recently, Manny had been really busy. Since I became the Bob Lee's representative at the Country Unification, Unification Council, he's been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. There's something about his sprite that really makes me think that he's going to be the culprit behind everything. Just because in Ace Attorney, it seems like when you have someone who smiles all the time or someone who's just too friendly, that instantly makes them the murderer. Or my earlier assumption, which is like, hey, you have big breasts, that means you're either a murderer or a victim and you won't survive. I'm sorry, but what's this country unification council? Oh, well, you see, and tonight's events proceeded without a hitch. Our two countries were to reunify and become one again. But I guess with how things turned out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. Hmm, I suppose not. Okay, I guess I'll present the other statue to him. The Alabas version of it. The statue resembles that hero, the Steel Samurai, don't you think? I was thinking, what would you say to changing the name from the st to the Steel Samurai statue? This might attract a few more tourists to our country if I did, right? I I'm not sure what to think. I thought that thing was a national treasure. <laughs> well, I guess we already have. Okay, well, I'll see you later, mister. Um... No, 
Okay, just let me do what I want. I'm a grown man. Really? Then why are you trying to go to the Steel Samurai gift shop to buy action figures? They're not action figures! They're live recreations. They're having a real time of it cleaning up after the fire. Hmm, I suppose we should stay out of stay out here and investigate the stage more then. What do you mean investigate it? We can barely even look at the thing. Can we examine it? Okay. Oh my goodness. This is annoying. They shouldn't, like, they shouldn't have K yell at you every time you try to walk off the screen. It would appear that this stage is also scheduled to be renovated. You know, I would love to perform on a stage like this. Something like the Greatest Great Thief Show. <laughs> I should think it would be a bad idea for a thief to show their face to the whole world. I agree, Edgeworth. It is a very bad idea. Hmm, a ladder. Actually, that's a step ladder. <laughs> They're the exact same thing. No way. From their structure up, they're totally different. But of course, from a thief's perspective, the best kind of ladder is a rope ladder. A step ladder is much too heavy to carry around, after all. From a prosecutor's perspective, any type of ladder is guilty. <laughs> of being dangerous during an earthquake. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. You look like you're enjoying yourself, detective. Well, I don't have much else to do, and I enjoy as much as a good- I don't have much else I enjoy as a good investigation, sir. So, what did you find out? Ah, oh, well, haha, <laughs> not, 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 not a thing. <laughs> I take it he has found nothing of any particular use, as usual. How about now? Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I got something real interesting from Ambassador Paleno. Oh, and what is this something interesting? This, sir. What? Is that a lantern with someone's soul in it? <laughs> wow, that's so pretty. I'm so jealous. That's a real treasure there. Why does the flame burn green, detective? So apparently if you burn it with a special white crystal or wit crystal oil that they only make in Babel, it turns this green it turns this pretty green color, sir. Interesting. So it's a special property of the oil. Suppose this is a ploy to force people to visit Bobble, should the oil run out. <laughs> hey, Gummy, what about these silhouettes? They're stuck, they've stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern, so they project some images. Oh? Silhouettes, huh? And they are rather pretty, aren't they? Wait, what am I doing? I was supposed to be asking for an update. Oh, I bet that's totally gonna be a thing where it's like, I saw a shadow somewhere! And it's like, well, the lantern projected the shadow that you saw. Hey, what's wrong, sir? There's something I want you to investigate for me. Do you think you can do that much? Uh... You got it, sir! Hey, that's not fair! Why is Gummy getting to do all the fun stuff? Ah, uh, well, that's because I'm Mr. Edgeworth's partner. I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role as assistant. <laughs> I expect the two of you to get along and work together like professionals on this. <laughs> Still arguing. Hey, where are you going? Are you headed back to Alabast? Yes, but before I do, I suppose I should give you a summary of what's happened. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I see. So there's been a murder in both countries using an object from the other country. That's the gist of it. Babol is just as strict as Alabast. In their inspection of the people, wait, of the people and the things that enter their country. Meaning that somehow, both murder weapons were smuggled into the two countries. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. Perhaps the key to the weapon smuggling is the person who traversed both countries. Oh, so this is going back to the smuggling ring, isn't it? You mean the fake Yatagarasu? One way or another, the Yatagarasu is connected. Of this, I am sure. Now then, where was the Yatagarasu first spotted? I believe it was the Rose Garden on the Alabastian side of the embassy. The garden is just on the other side of this boundary. It is where Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight. At least, that's where I heard the Yatagarasu had appeared. In that case, I believe it's vital that I investigate the Rose Garden post-haste. Wait, before you go, take a look at this, Mr. Edgeworth. What? What? It looks like a guitar pick with holes in it. What is it? My guess is that it's a guitar pick. 
<laughs> just Clavy shows up all of a sudden. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, who's that sexy man in the red jacket? Wait, that's just me. Just starts hitting on Edgeworth all of a sudden. So, you come here often? No, I'm here on business. Who are you? I'm gonna rock your world. I prefer classical music and jazz. Get out of my way. I picked it up just now over there. Do you think it'll be of any use? There's a little water on it, but how did the water get on it? Doesn't look like there's anything I could get wet around here. I was thinking they have concerts here at this open air stage from time to time, right? All right, I'll have to find its owner later. Guitar pick. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Mr. Edgeworth, will you be willing to hold on to this? What's this? It's misused perfume. It's the bottle that woman left behind and that I found seven years ago. I thought that one day it'd be of some use tracking her down. So I kept it safe all this time. Thank you, I'd be honored to hold onto it for you. Okay. Whoa, okay, I can finally leave now. Yay! Wait, hold on, if I can leave, that means I should also be able to go into here, shouldn't I? They're having a real time- okay, nope. We're still cleaning after the fire. <laughs> so I guess that's why we can't go inside. I'm very curious as to the entire explanation of this case. Rather than being curious of like, oh, what- who's the main murderer that did all this? I'm very curious as to see how it happened. I'm not sure how it happened, but I'm sure we'll find some good reason. Can we finally go in here? No. We saw the show just beyond these doors, but it's been quite a number of hours now. Mr. Edgeworth, have I ever told you that you talk like an old fogey? <laughs> what does that mean? I was merely reminiscing. Is that such a crime? <laughs> okay, well, let's go into here. I think I'll be returning to the investigation in Alabas now, but... I know, I know, I'll go back to Babel and do some more investigating there. March 14th, 9.58pm, Rose Garden. I like how, um... Edgeworth's assistant is actually functional in some way. As where Phoenix's... Phoenix and Apollo's assistants are just there to be cute. Literally, Maya is there to cheer Phoenix on and be there for him. And then Trucy was there for Apollo, literally just to distract the court with magic tricks because the judge is extremely dumb. <laughs> I, I imagine this in the middle of a murder, and it's like, Apollo, we ran out of cards, I have an idea. Hey, judge, look at this, I'm gonna pull a rabbit out of a hat. Oh my god, how'd she do that? I will sit at my desk and contemplate for 30 minutes as to how she did this. Court is in recess. <laughs> I see your back, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, okay, it's, uh, Von Karma. How are things in Babel? Although I can't really say I expect much from Scruffy and that girl. The investigation into Manny Cochin's death hasn't really progressed any. However, the investigation in the Yadgrasu has. Ah, yes, the Yadgrasu. Even now, I find it hard to believe. A person who can freely traverse between the two countries at will, preposterous! Well, that's what I came here to investigate. I heard that this is where the witnesses claim to have seen the Yacht Grasu. That's correct, Ambassador. Alba was to give a speech tonight here in Alabas. And that's when the Yacht Grasu, and that's when the Yacht Grasu appeared. The shadow of the mysterious thief appeared and just as, va just as suddenly it vanished. After that, there was the fire at the Bobbley's embassy that the Yacht Grasu started. I vow that not a single feather from the Yadgrasu shall escape my diligence. The Yadgrasu just like, swings by and kicks Edgeworth in the face like, Oh my god, oh no. Lang's over there, I don't want to talk to him. Hmm, the statue bears resemblance to the Primadu statue. The plaque says King Primadu on the end of the battlefield. In order to save the in order to save Queen, uh, que the Queen, King Primadu put his life on the line and went to war. So the Prima Du was actually a person of royal blood. I thought he was simply some imitating character from an ancient legend. Well, what surprises me is that a real person also look who lo that there's a real person who looked like the Steel Samurai existed. I suppose there's that too. <laughs> oh wow! Look at this leaf fountain. That's neat. There are roses scattered on the surface of uh, surface of the water, creating a pleasant fragrance. 
It's not just for aesthetics. This pool's water is also used in putting out fires. I see. Oh. The pool stopped filling itself automatically. <laughs> the fountain spouts are set to stay open until the pool's water reaches a certain level. This water is used to put out fires. I suppose it must be refilled to its normal level. Which suggests that this pool was recently somehow used somehow in this embassy. That seems a little specific to have a pool in your embassy so you can put out a fire. And that refills itself, too. I guess I'll just take some notes about it in the- just in case. Uh, what? what No! <laughs> Why are you in there? Were you trying to kill yourself? Please, continue, I'll watch. How dare you surprise me like that! I'm sorry. Hey, oh hey, Edgy, thanks for what you did back there. Well, gratitude alone is enough. More importantly, Larry, this pool is not for your personal enjoyment. I know that! Do you really think that I'm the type to just jump into a pool and swim around for fun? Objection! By the way, you guys said also, apparently, Larry is not the person that drags on the case forever because... I don't know, I don't know who it's supposed to be. I'm surprised it's not Larry because he's already getting on my nerves. All right then, did you by chance fall into the pool? Nice guess, but no dice. So you know my son. So you know my son, right, Edgy? Your son. I guess I kind of lost sight of him when I shook hands with the amb ambassador. But he has a son, is he for real? And I'm pretty sure he was around here when I last saw him. You, you imbecile, how can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell into the pool? How old is this child of yours anyway? Huh? Oh, um, how old is he again? <laughs> Larry, this is the first time I've heard of a son. Who, who exactly is the mother? The mother? Oh, that chick. The pink princess. The pink princess. <laughs> Miss Von Karma. I was a bit confused by this man's word for, for words for a bit there. No, I was totally after that hot, like, that hot old bag ass. That's what he wanted. <laughs> However, I believe that he is looking for the doll of the Iron Infant. Yep, because I'm the Steel Samurai through and through, heart and soul. And the Iron Infant is my cute little son. You, you, you have given a whole new meaning to the phrase, an astounding fool. Larry, we have not seen hide nor hair of the, the Iron Infant. But rest assured that if we should find him, we'll let you know. Now get out of here. Now get out of there. Sounds good. In that case, I'll just go search over there. <laughs> hey, wait! <laughs> uh, well, it's not as if he'll get very far swimming around in that pool. And though he's unrelated to the murders, he sure knows how to cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, this light broke. There's an overturned spotlight here. When the Yatagrasu disappeared, the audience that was waiting for the speech to start panicked. Suppose that's when someone must have knocked it over. I'm having a tough time visualizing the mass confusion that took place here. <laughs> Thought to use my whip to capture the Yacht Garasu. However, there were people in my way and I was unable to land even a single lash. <laughs> Suppose this means that some other poor saps were hit instead. <laughs> Look, lady, it's not my fault your child got hit with my whip. He's obstructing justice. But ma'am, you hit all nine of my children. Why would you do this to them? Well, they were they were probably doing something bad, probably. Plus, it's really fun to hit children with his whip. Oh god, it's him. Have you finished checking out all the bystanders? Yes, sir. And we found... 14 counts of pickpocketing, 16 counts of illegal parking, and one person ran a light, sir. Don't tell me you didn't find anything related to the case. Sir, not a single thing, sir. Well, for now, let's just get those other lawbreakers down to the precinct. Agent Lang. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor. I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. Make no mistake, it's not like I was trying to help you with what I did. After I left, did you receive word from Ambassador Alba? Word to wrap up our bodyguard assignment at the end of the day. Oddly enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. 
<laughs> As if I can be so easily called away from this case after I've come this far. I swear that I'll find the truth and drag it out, screaming into the light. You're with me on that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Yeah, I guess. We're on the same side. Kind of. <laughs> you were working as Ambassador Alba's bodyguard at the time. So naturally, you witnessed when the Yachtgrasu appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief all right, with my own two eyes. The Yachtgrasu was always there, lurking in the shadows. But when the spotlights were turned on for, on for Ambassador Alba's speech, a shadow appeared. That's when the cries of, it's the Yadirasu ra rang out. The next second, the spotlight went out. And by the time we got the area lit again, the death thief had vanished. When we investigated afterwards, we found the reason the lights went out. It was because someone had unplugged the extension plugs for all other outdoor, all the outdoor electronics. Whether it was someone doing it on purpose, or simply a guest who had tripped over it, we don't know. But one thing is for certain. The Autograssi was here. So you're saying that basically all you saw was the thief's silhouette? Yes. If all you saw was a shadow, then it's entirely possible that the shadow belonged to someone else. Ha, good thinking, sis. You just might be right. If it weren't for the fact that there was no one else with that same shape. Not among the staff or audience members. My men have already done a thorough check of everyone, so I know I'm right. As someone else's shadow. That sounds like a plausible hypothesis. It says that it's a statue of the queen who spoke of, of love to King Primadu. Hmm. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it seems that you are lousy at reading a woman's heart. <laughs> I opened my mouth about his statue, and she somehow made the leap to that. The suddenly dis uh, appearing of the di and the disappearing shadow of the Yachtgrasu. I believe I've figured out its true origin. I expected no less from my subordinate. Now let's hear what you know on the subject. What really casts the shadow? It was the statue. The suddenly appearing, uh, dis disappearing shadow of the Yantagrasu. It is not possible that it was created by- is it not possible that it was created by the statue? Are you playing me for a fool, Miles Edgeworth? The statue bears absolutely no resemblance to the shadow of the Yantagrasu. You are correct, however, this statue is but one part of the whole picture. What do you mean by only one part- I, st I love how she starts, like, sweating and becoming super nervous, like, Oh my god, he's right again! I keep trying to be right, but he never just lets me. God, I'm so stupid compared to Edgeworth. Wasn't it because this leaf was probably bent in the way, causing it to look like a weird helmet? Francisco, if you could take a look at this, don't you find it to be a bit suspicious? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> the silent stare, like, hmm, as I thought. Well, you see, I was merely testing you just now. We have no time to waste on your pompous talk, so get on with your explanation already. Yeah, you... Really, Von Karma? Him? You're yelling at him for- Oh god, all those whips. Ah! Eh, I guess Francisca just couldn't understand my point. I'm just too smart for her. I need to think this through again. Now the Yachtgrasu's shadow. This is really only one thing that can explain how it was cast. And it must be this. I don't know what I'm actually supposed to point at, though. I thought I was right the first time. Oh, we can actually switch screens. No, I didn't mean to- <laughs> I was trying to switch screens. Hit the wrong button. Oh no, I'm destroying our life bar. I should have put more points in vitality. Then this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> there we go. It's this. It's this lady with the thing over that. It's another statue. The Yachtgrasu's shadow was made from the statues of, from the shadows of these two statues. Made? What do you mean by that? Right now, the spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in a panicked state. However, if we were to restore the lights to where they were when the thief appeared, 
You believe that the two shadows will create the Otogorasu shadow? Precisely. Oh, that was her talking. <laughs> now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Otogorasu. First, if we set up a spotlight to cast a shadow of King Primadu in the battlefield. The statue of the king's, uh, the shadow of the king's statue would appear on the backdrop of this stage. Likewise, if we set light, uh, light up on the queen who spoke of the love to King Primadu, silhouette would also appear on the backdrop to the stage. Aha! Huh. So if we were to combine the two shadows, it looks nothing like the Otograzu shadow. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, how did you explain this grotesque shape? <laughs> Looks like a unicorn woman. Calm down, Francisca. <laughs> by the, the way the light needs to be shown on the queen's statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? Or is it just the hand? I believe the whole of the king's shadow needs to be used for the, to this to work. However, in the case of the queen, I don't believe her whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Only one part. Yes, and that part alone is enough to fill in the rest of the Yachirasu shadow. Why don't why didn't you say that in the first place? You're right, I I, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, it's the hand that creates that awesome looking backdrop. Present! Think back to what is missing in our shadow. Five long thin areas connect now. Are uh, correct? Now, what does that remind you of? Ah! Oh, that's right! It can only be the shadow of the queen's left hand! Francisca, can we please adjust the spotlight's position? So that it only shines on the queen's left hand. Alright, well, let's give it a try and see what we got. Yeah, I'm very curious to... Somehow I don't think shadows quite end up looking like that. It's... Hmm. Yeah, this is exactly like the shadow I saw. The culprit must have changed the spotlight's positioning beforehand. And then pulled the plug after the pe after people saw what the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved around the spotlights, which we can assume was also part of the culprit's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Atragrasu shadow had vanished, which means that the shadow was a construct from the very beginning. So you see, the Atragrasu never did visit Alabas tonight. The only country that thief visited was Baybal, although it can be it can be assumed that the Otograsu had an accomplice in Alabas. An accomplice? But who? I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the shadow show. <laughs> I sense that the biggest clue is yet to solving this case is the existence of this accomplice. So it's probably Callisto, you, and someone else. The thing is, I don't know who that someone else could possibly be. How's the investigation going? Oh, it's Detective Bad. Hi, Mr. Bad. Detective Bad, have you come to join us in investigating the Atagrasu? I've left the murder in Agent Lang's charge. And my only target from the very beginning is the Atagrasu, so yes. So, what have you found out? I got a piece of evidence. May I see it? No. Oh, sure, but you might regret it. We're here because we are ready to face whatever may come. So if you please. When people heard the commotion, bystanders started gathering. And one woman claimed, I'm telling you, I'm a genuine international journalist. <laughs> she gave me an interesting picture. Oh, was it Lotta Hart? <laughs> A journalist? Well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman. This is the photo I got from her. He was wall running? We have no chance of taking him down. Look at that. Well, what in the world? The Yatagrasu- The Yatagrasu's flying in the, through the air. The times, they are a-changing. Once I fought an on-ground Yatagrasu, now I have to fight an aerial Yatagrasu. Next year, we'll have to fight a naval Yatagrasu. <laughs> it's not just... it's... not just man. But evidence, even they lie to us somehow. Well, when, when was this photo taken? Apparently right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floors were put out. 
it was taken from a nearby building that you can see the embassy from. I see, so this is taken after the first fire, or after the fire. First fire, there was no second fire. The blur in this picture took off from the Bobolese embassy. Flew over the boundary and headed for the embassy of Alabast. This is simply not possible. We are incapable of flight. Well, if you aren't, that's weird, because I can totally fly whenever I want. Edros Cravat just turns into wings. I am Cravat Man. I will save the day every day. Is that a fact? I've had the pleasure of dealing with the case involving a flying person once. Actually, come to think of it, I've come across a case like that as well. Two, actually. Maybe it happens more often than we think. Am I up to the task of solving the mystery behind this photograph? Well, the Autograssu took off from the Bobolese Embassy, so I should start from there. Francisca, I need to return to the Bob Bobble investigation for a bit. Alright. Wow, okay. That ended with less bickering than I thought. Oh, she's actually following me still, okay. I'll continue investigating on this side of the building. Alright, I'm counting on you. She's not gonna find shit. <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Edward. Now, come on, let's get back to our investigation. Yes, let's... Oh, that's cool. I like how it just lets me switch partners depending on what area I'm in. That's neat. Can I go back in now? Yay! <laughs> oh, he's still smiling. He's like, everything is burnt to pieces. But at least you can come visit for half off. <laughs> I think after all that running around, we're right back where we started. It would appear that way. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth. Have you found Manny's killer yet? I'm terribly sorry, Ambassador Polano, but I have yet to find his killer. And I guess his murder was really the work of the Yatagarasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake Yatagarasu. The real Yatsukrasu is a noble vigilante who is only out to steal the truth. Miss Faraday, please don't make such a sad face. I have no idea what you're talking about, but... If there's anything I can do for you, all you, all you have to do is ask, alright? Mr. Polano. Actually, there is one thing you can do. Will you allow us to take another look around? We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Oh, sure. Please feel free to investigate to your heart's content. Also, there are a few questions I'd like to ask you personally, Ambassador. If it will bring a smile back to Miss Faraday's face, then I'll gladly answer anything. Thank you, Mr. Polano. You're a total gentleman. Haha, <laughs> you don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey, Sir Polano. Those two sure got chummy awfully quickly. <laughs> you know, it's easy to say, but we... But, wait. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? We should probably start by comparing the state of this room before and after the fire. And then we should look into the matter of the suspicious person you spotted. Yeah. When I came into the room, that person was already gone. And I'm willing to bet that that person was I was chasing was Mr. Cochin's killer. We don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the Kiliats Grassu stole seven years ago was found here, it signals that perhaps Miss Yu is also somehow involved. I knew it, that woman is almost is almost definitely Mr. Koshin's killer. Yet again, we don't know that. There are too many mysteries to be solved in this case. Speaking of the Yatsugrasu and mysteries. I received a most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad? He's taking part in the investigation too? Yes, he has been crashing, or crashing, he has been crashing his car into random people on the street and calling out the Oscarazzi's name very loudly. We had to stop him and make him take a nap for a while. <laughs> He's just crashing to the side of the embassy. Yatagrasu, I'll find you yet. <laughs> yes, he has been chasing after the Oscarazzi for all these years. Uncle Bad. Now then, I was told that his photo was taken just after the fire. But what? This kind of looks like the person in the long coat I was chasing. Does this mean that I was chasing a fake Yachgrasu after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think many people can fly either. But this could be how that person escaped. 
Well, we'll need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. In any case, let's not dawdle anymore, and let's pick up where investigation left off. Yay! Okay, so finally investigating again. So I can figure out anything. Before, they wouldn't even let us over here, so this is definitely going to be very useful. It appears that this area was heavily damaged by the fire. Yeah, I guess we should hurry up and get started examining everything. Don't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I don't even know where to start either, though. <laughs> Edgeworth, I don't know what to do either. Don't put me in a spot like this, please. <laughs> Alright, um... There's a bottle of Bombalis ink on Mr. Cochin's desk. And it looks like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Plato, it looks like your precious Bobbly's ink is all right after all. What? That's odd. Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it's just that there's something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? Oh, I guess when we go back to talk to him, he'll talk about it. Cool. The safe wasn't open at the time of the fire. You could tell because the inside wasn't burnt, right? Yes, and thanks to the safe's fire resistance, the smuggling evidence was preserved. Aren't safes great? They always hold the most wonderful promise of treasures within. Well, this one certainly did have a few inside. <laughs> uh, what about the statue? What's up with this? So this is the real Primadu statue. This is really valuable, right? That's what they say. <laughs> you see her just sitting there, exploding with excitement. She's like, steal, 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 steal! <laughs> It's like, um, sir, is she okay? It sounds like she's talking about stealing something. No, no, she's always like this. She just likes to make jokes. Kill, kill, kill! <laughs> okay, you're not seriously considering the theft of this statue, are you? No way, Mr. Edgeworth. I wasn't thinking about anything like that. I was just calculating in my head how much the statue is worth. Hmm, that sounds mighty suspicious to me. <laughs> now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask you about your movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire? Which fire are you talking about? Which one? There was more than one tonight. Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it. We had two fi- Oh my god, this just gets more and more confusing. Two fires here at the Bobbly's Embassy tonight. What a bother all of it was. Wait, but the only fire we know about is the one after the Jammin' Ninja show. Ah, uh, well, the first occurred at the start of the Jammin' Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floors of our ambassador caught fire. Not wanting to cause a panic among the, the theater goers, we decided to keep it internal. Then the fire after the Jammin' Ninja show was the second one of the, of the night. Exactly. So the fire I witnessed was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't ex uh, Detective Bad make reference to the first fire? When was this photo taken? Apparently, right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floors were put out. Suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. Oh, okay. So then, what was the extent of the damage in the second fire? The second fire was contained to this floor, the 3rd floor. I think it was left over embers from the fire on the floors above that caused it. That's, how should I put this? A very bad stroke of luck. My office on the fifth floor, Manny's office here. And Manny himself, all gone in a blink of an eye. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Polano. Oops, look at me going on and on. <laughs> Now then, was it you what what was it you wanted to ask again? We were discussing what your actions and whereabouts for today today were. And if you happen to know what Mr. Cochin's actions and whereabouts were as well. But yes, very well, let's see. I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. When I woke up and then I brushed my teeth after that, I had a roll for breakfast. <laughs> this gives us a whole life story. Then I showered my body. Would you like to hear about which parts of my body I scrubbed into it? No, that's fine. I don't need to know. But no, but I insist. It's only... It's only right to tell... No, no, just stop. <laughs> Fascinating. How about the, if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? 
Oh, you liked a condensed version. All right, I can do that for you. What were you doing in the morning? So what did Mr. Coach and, and you do this morning? Well, originally we were supposed to meet and shake the hands of the Jam and Ninja. But Manny and I wanted to turn into a photo op, so we were here tidying this place. You helped clean Mr. Cochin's office. Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this, but my office is currently undergoing renovations. Okay. Which is why both the Primitive Statue and the Bobbly's Knife are set down here. I see. Oh, but the tidying didn't really take much, really. We just burned some files that no longer that we no longer needed and expired coupons in the fireplace. I bet clearing up the fireplace must have been <laughs> must have been a real pain though, or cleaning it up. Aw, oh, about that, I kinda forgot to clean the ashes out. <laughs> I guess I'm up a creek without Manny here to get angry at me. An ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of the secretary's anger. <laughs> oh well he's very good at being very mad. Why even just this morning he got mad at me? I spilled some Bobbly's ink in onto the back wall when I was burning the files, you see. Then he got mad at me, saying I should treat the ink with more respect. <laughs> Apparently orders go up <laughs> the command of chain around here. That's about it for what we did this morning. Just some cleaning. And burning. Not, not any crime, though. Don't tell me you had no other work to do being an ambassador and all. Yeah, saying you were burning something in the morning before a fire started is really suspicious, but... Hey, I'm not gonna say anything about that. Now then, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Cochin did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down together to the Theatrum Neutralis. That is such a cool name. <laughs> Theatrum Neutralis. We had to be there for the start of the Steel Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. So they went together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. A little while later, after I had straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. Because I was to take part in the photo op on stage at, at, the, uh, uh, at the end of the show. Hmm, there was a, comm a commemorative photo op at the end. I wanted to be in it. Why couldn't they have let me go? It was a fantastic photo. The three of us, Ambassador Alba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor. To prepare him for my handshake photo op with a jamming ninja. Seems to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when the first fire broke out. But I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully no one was hurt. I admit I ran away from the first fire as fast as my legs could carry me, because I am a coward. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the embassy staff put it out. So you didn't see Mr. Cochin again after the start of the Steel Samurai show. Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him, he was lying there in an eternal sleep. I see. Ambassador Polano, I thank you very much for your help. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Edgeworth. If there's anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, alright? There actually is. We want to ask about your ink. I wonder if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Cochin's bottle of ink. Um, I just thought of it right now, but... During the second fire, Manny was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. But when I did, I was greeted by roaring green flames. The flames were so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. The fire was green. What was the cause? Oh, it was the lantern. Well, wit crystal oil burns green when it's lit, as you can see by this lantern. Hmm. And Bobbly's ink is made from the same oil, which means it would also burn green. You know, I too had thought it was Manny's ink that had caught on fire. So that's why I was surprised to find out there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. The case of the perplexing green flames. Talk about a mystery. What exactly was it that caught on fire in here? Yeah, that's odd. I can't imagine what it was unless there was another lantern in here. Yeah, those don't have to do anything with each other. Is there a fireplace in here? Let's check it out. Fireplace, huh? So, Bumble so Babel's offices have them too. Two? 
There's a fireplace in a relatively same location in the Alabastian office. However, we found something that I'd rather not recall ever again. I still can't believe that we found that lady's undershirt in the fireplace. <laughs> if it was that traumatizing, why don't you try creating new memories with this fireplace? <laughs> I love you, fireplace. Let us be together forever, so I can forget those horrid memories. You should climb inside and we can play hide and seek. <laughs> and come out covered in suit. Uh, soot. Suit. I think not. Uh, you really have no sense of fun, Mr. Edgeworth. I don't know what you consider fun. You're crazy. It appears that Mr. Cochin's body has been taken for an autopsy. And when outlined, is all is left to tell the tale of his murder. How sad. You still don't know where the blade of the bobbly knife went. Could it be that the killer walked away with it? I don't know yet, Edgeworth. Hmm, a grandfather clock. This one resembles the one in Alabas. Oh, that clock has been- that, Oh, that clock has been with us since back when we were still in Kadopia. That's one big clock. Hey, does this one have a bird that pops out like a cuckoo clock? Haha, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, but no. But I'm sure you'll love the chime. Really? It's going to be 11 soon, so maybe I'll get to hear it then. At that time already, time sure flies by when I'm involved in an investigation. Oh, it's not too late. The night's only just begun. Okay, it's not good for you to stay up late, you know. Yes, Gramps. <laughs> oh, am I supposed to uh, deduce this with the... Uh... Yeah, I think so. Yes, it is, because it looks exactly like the other piece of paper we have. The shape of this notepad matches the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right. What is it? It looks like something straight out of the Monument Valley. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. That notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. We've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You do seem quite passionate about it. Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burnt to a crisp by the fires? <laughs> Pastor Polano, if you, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm? This looks like Manny's handwriting. I see, so... Wait, wait, what? Why did it skip? Ooh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabast. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murder Damas 2. Damas 2? Then this note... Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Damas 2 to seal the Primadu statue. What? Manny tried to steal Alabast's Primadu statue? We would know for sure if we could run a, hand, uh, run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were written by Mr. Cochin? Y yes I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Mr. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. But I can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any idea as to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There's one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be of great help, Ambassador. Yay, talk again. I believe that you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired the mask too. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. But because the Atagurasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't, didn't it? Haha. <laughs> I'm actually relieved that the rest of the event has been cancelled. For you see, Babel's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know that about Babel's Primadu statue? Of course he knew, that's why he was the only one I could consult with. We'd have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, let me handle it, it'll be alright. I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Kotopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all that to ensure that you're the next Kotopian amb ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? He was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or will be. 
I don't know the answer to that, or I don't know the answer to why he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond this just simple kindness. Oh, here you are, Mr. Edgeworth. Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I requested? Yep, got it all right here, sir. Here you go, Kate. Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What's all this, Gummy? It's all the information that the, uh, on this room that I got from the Embassy and Aeropole people. Now we know exactly how this room... Wow, Gumshoe actually did something. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, Detective. Oh, it's nothing, sir. An expert getting people to talk. Wow, you two remind me so much of my father and Uncle Bad. What do you mean? As, as prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like theirs was back in the day. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm going to become a good Yadagrasu, just like my father, right? Please don't ask me questions to which I have no answers to, okay? However, I can say that it is truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. <laughs> you bet. So what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes? That gadget, Mr. Thief, is it? <laughs> Mr. Thief? No, it's Little Thief, get goddamn right! Okay, okay, calm down, stop kicking my shins. Just like years ago. <laughs> that thing you called your secret weapon. Oh, you mean Little Thief? Hey, you're coming to rely on it, aren't you? I, I don't need a crutch like that, I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. <laughs> From the, from the information Detective Gumshoe gathered and the ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate the room as it was during the third floor fire. Got it. Alright, here we go. Dark skies of evening when no other bird dares take wing. One alone remains all-seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern-day Robin Hood! I like all these JoJo poses she does while <laughs> saying her whole spiel. Seems there are other things besides what the Ambassador mentioned that might have changed. It's possible that we might find the escape route the person case uh, the escape route the person case saw used as well. Oh, what 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 is this? Is it some sort of light show I was not told about? <laughs> it's the power of a true vigilant vigilante. It's recreating the room with info I inputted. Really? That's certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Farday. Um, I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. No joke, me being like a technology nerd as I am, I would flip out if I saw something like this. It looks like a very comfortable chair. Well, it doesn't look all that broken, so why don't you try sitting in it? No, I'd better not. It's very important that we preserve the crime scene at all times. But you're always touching all sorts of things at all at the crime scenes. That's because I'm a prosecutor. That is part of my job to examine... Wait, okay, I think something might have just occurred to me. What is that, Mr. Edgeworth? Attorneys and prosecutors are not supposed to be at crime scenes touching things, are we? That's right. Well, I guess I'll just have to turn in my badge. Seriously, Phoenix and uh, Edgeworth have so much authority into things that they should have no permission to touch. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And my job is to be a great thief. Okay, so what is this? Oh, the clock was moved, huh? This grandfather clock was apparently in a different position before the fire. According to the staff members, the clock was flush against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that the that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. Speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock now. Uh, speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock now, but I don't hear any chiming. Oh, that's odd. It was still chiming right on the dot of every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damaged its internal mechanisms or something. Ambassador Polano, may we take a look inside that clock? Sure, go right on ahead. Detective Gumshoe, you could please inspect the insides of this clock. Yes, sir, I'm on it. Mr. Edgeworth, I found this inside, sir. It, it looks like a length of wire, so this is what caused the clock to stop chiming. But what was a long length of wire doing inside this clock in the first place? Yay, wire! Now he can strangle people with it. Ah. Uh, why would someone do this to such a valuable clock? 
It sounds like it wasn't Mr. Polano that put the wire in there. Then perhaps it was Mr. Cochin's killer who did. So, if Mr. Cochin is the one who hired the fake Damask, and then Damask was killed, that means I have a pretty good idea that whoever thinks that they're the Yacht Grasu and their assistant are doing the right thing by murdering people, setting up a scheme to steal something. Like, they must have some sort of idealism that's like, Killing thieves is redeemable! <laughs> it's the charred remains of a ceiling fan. Ooh, I've seen a few of those before. They spin around and around and play music! Wait, what?! <laughs> I believe you're thinking of a musical- of a music mobile for babies. <laughs> All those. <laughs> yeah, that's it! But they're nothing alike. Now, I seriously to believe that Kay has never seen a ceiling fan in her life. <laughs> They're totally alike. They spin those babies right around like a record. <laughs> I see. I guess I can... I guess I can see that, kind of. That that would remind me of, like, a terrible, bad parent Kay. Like, Edward just walks in and Kay has, like, the baby duct taped to the ceiling fan. And she's like, oh, Edward, I just put this baby on the ceiling fan. I hope your mind's like, what are you doing? This is where they belong, don't they? These must have been the large green flames Ambassador Plano saw. With flames like these, it's no wonder he couldn't get in. Okay, by the time you came into this room, had the fire already been put out? Yeah, the fire had died out or something by that time. Then this fire is here only burned from the time the third... The fire started on the third floor. Until the Yachtgrasu appeared and caused a stir in Babel, I suppose. I guess Mr. Polano was just lucky enough to run into this fire as it was burning, huh? Yes, you could put it that way. And since you were the first to discover the body... You can assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person you were chasing, of course. I knew it! That person I was- I saw was definitely up to no good. I mean, that person could even be Mr. Cochin's killer! That is very likely to be the case. After all, that person came into this room before you. And must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. Okay, then. Maybe the green fire was where it was, uh... Okay, maybe the green fire was where it was to prevent anyone from coming in. But then, what did the person set it on fire to make the green flames? Or why did the person set it on fire? Well, whatever it was, the person burned it... Per, burned it made a rather sizable fire. And since the fire is green, well, we've s seen something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you get what, uh, you get what I mean. Yes, I do believe that I... That what you are thinking is exactly why these flames are green. Which fire-related piece of evidence burns the same color as these green flames? The oil! Very good, Zeno. You get a cookie. The source of the green in these flames is related to this. Oh, really? Well, I don't think they're related at all. Oh. Sorry. I was, it really wasn't related. <laughs> hey, you honestly apologized this time for being wrong. Ah, uh, what? I'm, I'm always honest. <laughs> And that's a good thing, just keep on doing it. Yeah, I noticed that was super weird about him. He didn't, like, he didn't try to make an excuse like he does with Von Karma constantly. K was just like, you're wrong, and he's like, yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> if I stay calm, the answer should come to me. Oh yeah, that's right, because the ink bottle didn't break open. Duh. It's still unsealed. Or sealed. Which means it was the lantern. The silhouette lantern. Its green flame comes from the white crystal oil it's been burning. Yeah, that's the fire I was thinking of too! I love it, the green it gives off. It looks like a bunch of people's souls. I know, it's so pretty, the color of souls. I think we've now established that the green flames were caused by the white crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there was only one other thing made from white crystal oil. Ooh, you mean that thing Mr. Polano was mistaken about, right? Yes, precisely. As we found out earlier in our investigation. Um, what? I don't get it. Can you feel me in, sir? Fine, I suppose. I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand. This thing made from white... Uh, this is the thing that made from white with crystal oil that Ambassador Plano was mistaken about. Wait, what? I don't understand. Where is this going? I thought we just... It was the samurai dogs. I think that would kill people if the samurai dogs were made of that white crystal oil. 
Oh yeah, that's right, it was the bobbly sink. This is where it gets put. Bobbly sink is made from the wit is made from wood crystal oil. Oh, so it should burn the same color as the flames in the lantern, right? Yes, precisely. However, the green flames in this room were not from a bottle of bobbly sink. Because we found the ink Mr. Cochin used on his desk, right? Yes, however, we know that Mr. Cochin was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now, what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. Oh yeah, I'm beginning to really feel the energy coming from you, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh, it would appear that I've finally found out the smuggling ring's real goal. Made a bobbly ink, this source of the green this is the source of the green flames. What was? Oh, the counterfeit bills! That makes sense because if he was counterfeiting bills, then oh. Made with bobbly ink. Oh yeah, okay. Take that. What would consume that great of a volume of ink to make? That would be the counterfeit bills that sm that smuggling ring made. Uh, the smuggling ring made and are circulating in Zhangfa. I'm sorry for my uh, flubbiness with words. My mouth is still a little odd. You're kidding! You're saying that it was Mr. Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say. He stole ba Bobble's printing press. Ambassador Mr. Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? Why, yes, and I do remember seeing him use it in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's not suspicious at all. Not at all. But I never did think he was using it for such a foul deed. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crimes, you will need to be investigated as well. Ah, uh, yes, I suppose so. We've caused a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? It is my duty to search out all who shielded Mr. Cochin and concealed his crime. For they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. Counterfeit bills data updated. Cool. Oh, are we not done still? Uh, I couldn't even think of what would be left. Oh, Gumshoe moved here. Gumshoe, detective, you took part in the initial Babel investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped put out the fire, sir. But that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. First, I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea, because it was in use. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at some point, I'd have been burnt to a crisp. Wait, that's odd. We always warn our staff that in, that in case of a fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. Oh? Maybe someone wrote it in a fit of panic. Detective, did you see the Yacht Grasu that came into the Bob Lee's embassy at all? I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they'd never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm. I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. The second fire broke out around the time the Yacht Grasu was spotted in Alabast. It's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babel, which caused some panic. So no one was able to get a good look at this Yacht Grasu the in the en that entered by a uh, Babel. Yeah, all they saw was a mysterious person wearing a long coat. But that's not enough to make a person make a positive ID, you know. Still, it was enough to make the people who received the calling card panic even more. A person in a long coat. Sounds like the exact same person I saw. The only person I know of who wears a long coat in this entire thing is Mr. Bad, and I highly doubt Mr. Bad is the actual Yatagrasu. <laughs> The Otagrasu that appeared in Alabast was proven to be just a fabrication, a shadow. In light of that fact, the Otagrasu that appeared in, ba in Bobble is also suspect. You can't be serious! Not when we're this close to capturing the fake. I mean, Callisto, you! Some of the Otagrasus appeared, uh, appeared, caused mass confusion, killed Mr. Coach, and then disappeared. Yeah, that is quite a problem. <laughs> By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Autogrosser? I, I did, but well... This embassy is huge, sir! I got separated from the other staff members I was with, and was lost for a while there. You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to go on, Detective. Hey, I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir! But you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to Kay's rescue. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah, it was when I was lost and wandering around in the third floor hallway, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed towards it right away. Oh, that's probably from when I found Mr. Cochin's body. 
Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got real worried and ran as fast as I could. And it's thanks to Gummy that Miss Sheena wasn't able to take me away. He covered for me until you got here, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, I see. So he can be useful once in a blue moon. <laughs> Still, it's too bad that Agent Sheena got here before I did. Hmm. I wonder where Agent Sheena was before you found her here. Well, just before I got to this room, I saw her coming out of the room next door. Oh, that's suspicious. Agent Sheena mentioned something about chasing the Yatagrasu herself earlier. Well, she apparently helped in putting out the first fire. Then during the second fire, I heard she was busy chasing the Yatagrasu. She seems to be a very dedicated agent. You would do well to learn from her. What are you pointing at me when you say that, sir? Why? Aw, oh, don't be so mean to Gummy. You did nothing wrong. I guess the one thing about Gumshoe is that even though he's not exactly useful, and he's actually been more useful in this case than I've ever seen him be useful in any case, even though he's not the most useful person to have around with you, he at least is an extremely kind person. I can say that. And uh, it's interesting how different Gumshoe's character is in here in all the other games, because it's weird. In here, like Gumshoe feels like friendly and nice from Edgeworth's perspective, like he respects Edgeworth so much and is nice to everyone. As were from Phoenix's perspective, Gumshoe is literally yelling at him and blaming him for every little tiny thing that goes on. Perhaps I should ask Ambassador Plano about it. Oh, I missed the first line. My bad. <laughs> Ambassador Plano, there is something I'd like to ask you about. Yes? About this office, it appears to me to be very similar to Ambassador Alba's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the location of the grandfather clock. Oh, that's right. You've also paid a visit to the Albastian outside of the embassy. Or two embassies are actually used to be one. Yes, I know. Even the pamphlet mentioned that. Which is why the building is bilaterally sy symmetrical. Selectrical. So no matter which room, the location of the fireplace and the like are exactly the same. Even where the arch is located is in the same... Uh, as my room is currently under renovation. We worked hard to make Manny's room look like the ambassador's office. You mean for your handshake photo up with the jam and ninja? Yes, that's right. I mean, what's a photo like if it's not taken in the ambassador's office, right? Yet another odd expression of Babel's uh, obsessively competitive spirit with all boss, I take it. Thank you, ambassador. That piece of information is all I need to connect the dots. Well, connect the dots? Well, anyways, I'm glad I was able to help you somehow. I don't really know what you're thinking. Oh, I'm thinking, all right. Sheena's location. And the, 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 the connected fireplaces. That actually doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Unless we're saying she got out through there and she was originally in this room. Oh, bilateral symmetry and connected fireplaces. That means that the connected fireplace is on this side of the building also. The Alabastian and Bobbly sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. As we know that to be a fact, then this room, f this room's fireplace may also hide a secret passageway. A secret passageway? I don't believe you, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, it's true. In Alabas, the fireplace turned out to have a, well a revolving back wall. A revolving wall sounds like something out of a ninja house. Wow, there's a trick like that built into the fireplace, sir? What? This, this embassy holds that kind of secret? There seems to be a lot about this room that you don't know about, Ambassador. I guess it's time to pay the bill for letting Manny do so much work for me. Please, I really want to know about the real Manny and what you know about this room. What are you waiting for, Mr. Edgeworth? Let's get to the bottom of this. Agreed. And my first thought is that it's likely the killer used the revolving fireplace. It looks like just another fireplace, though, doesn't it? So how do you turn it? So how do you turn it again? And on the boss side, to push where the X was on the wall, far wall of the fireplace. Ooh, I see an X back there, sir. Let me see what happens when I push it. Ah, oh, you scared me, sir. <laughs> so something about the fireplace that lies in contradiction to the facts. Huh? But we found an X where you thought there'd be one, right? We didn't, but that's not what I was referring to. Something is missing from this scene. What does this contradiction mean for us? I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. All I can see inside this fireplace is starter wood. Huh, that's odd. Doesn't match up with Mr. what Mr. Polano said earlier. 
Oh, that's what I'm supposed to notice? I'm supposed to notice that the wood hadn't been burned over the green tint? That's kind of weird. What is the meaning of this contradiction? Um, did that update anything? I have to deduce something, I'm guessing, then. Or else it doesn't really make much sense now, does it? Or is it a logic thing and I didn't see I got it? Oh, it totally did change this. Revolving fireplace used. Sheena's location. Is that what I'm supposed to match up that she left through there? But that doesn't really make much sense either. Oh, you know what? I bet we're supposed to deduce... Here, we have this, don't we? Yeah, we have his testimony, so if we put the two together... Eureka! Buster Polano, you said that you burned some old files in this fireplace today, correct? Yes, I burned quite a few files this morning, actually. And after you did, you forgot to clean out the ashes from the fireplace, correct? But that's right, but why are you asking, and why are you making such a scary face? I'm sorry, I admit that I'm a bit intimidating when I'm serious. In any case... Take a good look at this fireplace, and tell me what you did... Tell me what you find odd about it. Let's see. Huh? Where did all the ashes go? So it was used. Or something. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? You really don't think that Ambassador Polano is lying, do you? No, there is no reason for him to lie. And I don't believe his testimony is wrong, either. It's the fireplace that ca that is causing the contradiction. Okay, I wonder if you might update the fireplace data for me. You got it. I'll add in the ashes from the burnt files, and... Sounds like we pretty much figured everything out now, huh? Hmm. Well, it was nothing. All I did was follow where our leads led us. Ooh, and I sense it coming on. You're about to dazzle us again, right? Oh, you mean that? Well, it's what Mr. Edgeworth is known for, you know. There is really no need for you two to dance around the name of what I'm about to do. Logic! Oh my god, he's so cool. I've never seen him do the logic thing before, don't you like? Yeah, someday I'll learn to use logic. Missing ashes and revolving fireplace used. Connect. Yay! The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Ambassador Plano said that he spilled some bobbly ink in uh, while he was burning the files. And yet there is not a trace of spilled ink on the back of on the back wall anywhere. Well then I don't know what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. By using a revolving fireplace wall, the ashes were moved into the neighboring room. Okay, so Sheena was in here and then she moved to the next room, which means she probably started the fire. Which means that this is a clear in indication that the fireplace was used. Then you mean the person I was chasing disappeared from this room through here? Yes, I believe the person you were in, s in pursuit of is Mr. Cochin's killer. After committing the murder, escaped through the fireplace. Oh. Oh man, this pushes me closer and closer to figuring out my theory. It's figuring out the truth of my theory, at least. Wow, Mr. Edgeworth, you figured out the killer's escape route. I have, but... I have, but this is the only... This is only the beginning. Now we have to chase the killer down. Gina's location. Escape through evolving fireplace. Does this match up now, finally? Yes, it does. If the killer used the fireplace in this room t uh, to escape into the next, it's only logical for us to talk with the person who is in the neighboring room. Well, the person that was in the next room was... Oh, it was that person, sir. Yes, Detective Agent Sheena. Still can't get over, like, the fact that I found the name of my dog just anywhere. <laughs> that actually explains something. I remember uh, talking about my dog to someone. They're like, do you like Ace Attorney? And I'm like, yeah, but I've only played the first game. And they're like, oh, never mind. You'll, you'll see eventually. And I didn't understand what they meant, but now I think... I get that. <laughs> it's looking more and more like Miss Sheena is the killer, isn't it? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. We need to go through what we know so far. She came running straight into this room from the next one and instantly accused you. <laughs> Furthermore, she claimed that it could only have been you that killed Mr. Cochin. I don't have any proof yet. However, I know she is hiding something from us. Okay, then. Why don't we just go out and ask Miss Sheena herself? No, not yet. There's something that needs to be done first. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, it's my turn to do something, Mr. Edgeworth. Is it? 
Yes, but I have a two-part special assignment for you. First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on Damas 2's note. Okay, I'll get the lab boys on that right away. Second, I want you to see if you can fit through the revolving fireplace on the wall. But right now, sir? No, next decade. Of course, right now. We need to test our hypothesis first, don't we? Go on, Gummy, you can do it. Why ask him? Sheena is super, like, slim and skinny. Gumshoe is not a fair comparison for this. Alright, I'm gonna do this like a real man. Here I go, through the fireplace and back. <laughs> you shouldn't need to psych yourself up for that so much of a simple task, detective. I couldn't do that. I am... I would get stuck. Wow, the wall inside the fireplace really did turn. That's so neat. Now I want to try and go through there, too. Th there really is a secret passageway through here. I had no idea. Hmm. It would appear that the ash really was pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the bobbly's ink you spilled, Ambassador, is there on the w on the back wall. Okay, here I go, sir. Detective, I'd like you to go through there under the same conditions as the killer. Sir, I can't light myself on fire as much as you'd like me to. Huh, but there's all that ash and stuff. And your point is, now we're short on time. If you could please hurry on through. Uh, yes, sir. He's never going to fit. Okay, so now pretty much we have the whole picture, right? No, not yet. There remains a few more mysteries to solve. Wait, did he get through there? How? That thing looks so slim. I don't even think... Like, I can't even imagine a person getting through that area. That would freak me out. I hate being in tight spaces. Uh, such as the Yantagrasu's whereabouts, the other smuggling ring members. The two weapons that made it across the border, the key Miss Yu stole seven years ago. In fact, you still haven't figured out the thing regarding to how Miss Yu was related. Oh, you know what? This makes me think about it even more. Oh my god. The key was in this room and she escaped from this room and went to the next. Oh my god. If I, I think I've got it right. I can't wait to figure that out, though. In fact, we haven't figured out a thing regarding how Miss Yu is related to these embassies. Mr. Edgeworth, a number of pieces connect in a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make one completely mentally exhausted. I know I am, Edgeworth. <laughs> what are you saying, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought you were the one who said it was easy if you follow the leads. Hmm. Was that supposed to be an impression of me, okay? It is if you go, uh, it's, if it's info gathering you need, Gummy and I can help with that. And all you have to do is show off your fancy smanchy logical deductions. <laughs> show off. Does it seem like I'm being boastful when I do that? <laughs> yes, well, you kind of point your, like, finger to your forehead and smile at everyone in the room. And then these weird bubbles start popping up with words in them and I don't understand what's going on. Let's not overcomplicate matters, okay, Mr. Edgeworth? You've been so focused like a laser o on only what seems strange and out of place. It's no wonder nothing's clicked and we haven't unlocked anything yet. But if we think about- but if we think through things calmly, the answer should come to us. Okay. That's the sort of thing I say to myself. And I'm practicing how to unlock padlocks, you know. And it's something that I hope practice doesn't make perfect for your sake. Haha, <laughs> looks like you're back to your straight lace self again. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm back, sir. Yes, I can see that. Good work, detective. <laughs> Wait, you actually fit through that thing? Oh my goodness. How? This doesn't make any sense. Looks like you can use that fireplace like a door, sir. Why does that jacket on the wall look kind of familiar? Whatever. Are you alright, Gummy? Uh, I'm okay. It's just a bit of ash and dust, that's all. Your jacket has gotten quite filthy. I see the hem has practically turned black. <laughs> yeah, well, quite a bit of the unburn ink got on it, sir. Hmm, I see. Thank you, detective. You did a fine job. <laughs> I'll even pay the cleaning bill for your for the trench coat. What? Oh, no, sir. I could never. This is just my old coat, sir. If it was a coat I actually cared about, then I'd get it clean, but you know. I see. Very well, then. As you wish. So, because Gummy was able to climb through the fireplace, we know it can be used, right? Yes, but that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important fact. And that is... I'll have to explain it to you later. Right now we need to deal with the handwriting analysis, Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. I'll be back before you know it. The handwriting analysis on Mr. Cochin's handwriting will take a bit of time. 
Let us go and wait in the, the Theatrum Neutralis, along with Agent Lang and Agent Sheena. To be continued. Okay, that one was not that bad. I actually had a lot of fun figuring things out. Um, I hope you guys are really enjoying this game, because I definitely am. And, uh, these cases are a whole ton of fun to do. I'm probably going to be flubbing over my own speaking for a while, so I hope that doesn't bother you guys too much. Uh... I'm trying my best to just keep talking like I normally do. Anyways, if you like the video, please leave a like. It, helped, it would help out a lot. And if you would want to join Dust Brigade, then just click subscribe. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Riding out.